In 1988, a majority of Americans were economically comfortable and they attributed their comfort to Reagan and Bush. When Michael Dukakis, the Democratic governor of Massachusetts, ran for the presidency in 1988 against George Bush, Reagan's vice president, most voters saw little reason for change. Bush built his campaign on the coattails of the Reagan administration and promised the American people the status quo. In a famous campaign rally, Bush promised the American people, Read my lips. No new taxes. He also appealed to the moral majority, promising a kinder, gentler nation. Michael Dukakis did himself no favors with his campaign when he made one of the biggest gaffes in campaign history. In an attempt to show his support for the military, he performed a publicity stunt in which he donned a military helmet and headset and jumped inside a tank and took it for a ride. His small stature and frame made him look completely out of place and ridiculous. After the stunt, there was nothing he could do to reboot his image. Americans didn't seem to think too passionately about either candidate, proven by record low voter turnout. Bush won 53% of the popular vote, but ran away with the Electoral College, receiving 426 votes. He saw this landslide as a mandate to continue the policies of the Reagan administration. When George Bush took office, he inherited a $2.8 trillion national debt that had been left behind by his predecessors. This tied his hands on what he was able to accomplish in his domestic agenda. Despite this, Bush was able to tackle some of the agenda he had promised during his campaign. First, he created his America 2000 initiative. He attempted to reform education by implementing the idea of school choice. In this program, he wanted parents to use public funds to send their children to schools of their choice, whether it was public, private, or religious. He felt that this choice would put more pressure on schools to improve their performance, thus improving the future of the nation. In an attempt to fulfill his pledge to create a kinder, gentler America, Bush helped to pass the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA. This landmark law prohibited discrimination against 43 million Americans with physical or mental disabilities. He also signed an amendment to the Clean Air Act that would bring the government and business together to find innovative ways to reduce pollution and clean up the environment. The bill would target acid rain and toxic emissions. The last major accomplishment of the Bush domestic agenda was the appointment of Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court. When Thurgood Marshall retired, Bush chose Clarence Thomas to replace him. Thomas had a very conservative record, and he was met with staunch opposition from the Democrats. He was eventually confirmed with a 52 to 48 vote in the Senate. One of the biggest issues that Bush had to face as president was the collapse of the Soviet Union. During Reagan's administration, Mikhail Gorbachev became the leader of the Soviet Union. And as leader, he advocated for the concept of glasnost, or openness in politics. This would allow churches to open for the release of political prisoners, and journalists were given some freedom to criticize public officials. He also attempted to reform the economy through the concept of perestroika. This loosened the nation's strict control over the economy and gave more freedom to local officials. The Soviet Union even allowed some people to open small businesses. He was not trying to eliminate communism, but rather, he hoped it would lead to a more efficient, more innovative, and wealthier nation. During this time, Reagan had built the largest peacetime military in history. He took an aggressive position against the Soviet hold on the Eastern Bloc. On June 12, 1987, Reagan delivered his speech in West Berlin about the evils of communism. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. With the U.S. growing and the Soviet Union floundering, the two leaders came together to sign the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. This banned both nations from owning certain types of nuclear weapons in an attempt to ease tensions between the nations after decades of military buildup. Gorbachev's policies hadn't worked as he had hoped, and radicals in the Soviet Union began to voice their opinions, which was amplified by the policy of Glasnost. In 1989, Gorbachev withdrew from Afghanistan, which became a blemish on his military record. The next mark on his record came in Germany, where the people in East Germany had begun to organize for greater freedom. On November 9, 1989, the Berlin Wall was open, and floods of East Berliners poured into West Berlin. It was clear that East Germans rejected the Communist Party and wanted reunification with Germany. A year later, Germany was one country again, 
and the entire wall was torn down. This was a huge symbolic defeat for the Soviet Union and the ideology of communism. Soviet satellites in the Eastern Bloc began to think about independence. The first domino fell when Lithuania declared its independence. In response, Gorbachev ordered a military assault on unarmed civilians in the capital. The political blunder led to the emergence of the new political leader in Boris Yeltsin. Yeltsin was a member of parliament and the newly elected president of the Russian Republic. Though he assisted Gorbachev in leading the country, he was a vocal critic of Gorbachev's policies. On August 18, 1991, conservative members of the Communist Party, known as hardliners, attempted a coup to overthrow Gorbachev. They brought tanks and other vehicles to Moscow, but the Soviet people no longer feared this show of force. Despite his disagreements with Gorbachev, Yeltsin jumped on top of the tank and rejected the coup. This pleased the crowd and other world leaders, including President Bush. Shortly after, hardliners ordered a military attack of the Soviet parliament, but military leaders refused. The Communist Party was dissolved, and many of the Soviet republics, such as Estonia and Latvia, declared their independence. Gorbachev pushed for unity, but the momentum was too strong. And by Christmas Day, 1991, the Soviet Union ceased to exist and the former republics of the USSR became independent states. George Bush inherited a tough economy, and this really hindered a lot of his ability to get much of his domestic agenda accomplished. His record on his domestic accomplishments is not impressive, and he oversaw an economy with an increased unemployment and rising oil prices, although it was mostly due to unrest in the Persian Gulf. By the end of his presidency, the US was facing a recession, and the only way to prevent this was to increase domestic spending. Low on capital, he was forced to enact budget cuts and increase taxes. With the institution of new taxes, he had broken his promise of no new taxes, and the American people had lost faith in their president and the Republican Party. The conservative wave of the 1980s was over, and America was about to usher in their first Democratic president since Jimmy Carter. 